Hello friends, this video on mensuration part 2 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let's talk about a trapezium. So what's a trapezium? So this is also a quadrilateral with one pair of opposite sides parallel. So just one pair of opposite sides are parallel. So let's say if A, B, C, D is a trapezium. So in this case, we say that A, B, is parallel to CD. So just one pair of sides are parallel but if you look at AD and BC they are not parallel. So only one pair of opposite sides are parallel and this type of a quadrilateral is called a trapezium. Now you might wonder that how do we find out the area of a trapezium because we have never discussed about that before. So let's see what do we do to find out its area. So let's see what do we do to find out the area of a trapezium. So here in this slide we will try to find out a generic formula for finding out area of a trapezium so that it becomes very easy for us to find out area of any trapezium whose uh, dimensions are given. So let's say here we have A, B, C, D as the trapezium where AD is parallel to BC. Okay, so now what we do, first of all, our first step would be to draw perpendiculars. So we draw a perpendicular from A, from the vertex A to the opposite side BC and we draw another perpendicular from the point D to the opposite side BC. And let's name these points as E and F respectively. Okay, so that's our first step. So what did we do first? So our first step was to draw perpendiculars AE and DF. So now what do we have? Now we have to find out this entire green area, right? Now we have divided this green area into three parts. One is this triangle ABE. So now we have triangle ABE. We have another triangle DFC, so we have triangle DFC and we have this, at the middle we have this rectangle. So what is the rectangle? It is rectangle ADFE. So now we have these three things. Now we already know how to find out the area of triangles and rectangles. So we will, we will make use of uh, those knowledge now. So second step was that we divided it into three different shapes and now let us try to find out. So in the third step we find out area of each of these triangles and rectangles. So first area of triangle ABE. So how do we find area of a triangle? Half into base into height. So in this case base would be BE and height would be AE. So half into BE into AE. Now let us try to find out area of triangle DFC. So here also this would be half into base into height. So base would be FC and height would be DF. So this would be half into FC into DF. And then we find out the area of rectangle ADFE. So area of a rectangle is length into breadth. So the length would be EF and the breadth would be DF. Or you can say AE into EF. Anything is fine. So let's say this is AE into EF. So we have found out the areas of all these three shapes separately. So now when you have to find out the area of the trapezium. So what would be the area of the trapezium? So that would be equal to sum of these three. So if we call this as let's say A, we call this as B and if we call this as C, so area of trapezium would be given by A plus B plus C. So which is equal to half into BE into AE plus half into FC into DF plus AE into EF. So this would be the area of the trapezium. So now let us denote the values, denote some values to each of these uh, lengths. Okay. So here let us assume that the length of EF, 
that is the length of the rectangle is a. So if EF is a, then AD will also be a, that's quite obvious. Let's assume that these perpendiculars that we have drawn, they, their lengths are h respectively. So if this is h, this will also be h. Right, so now let's put these values. So we can write half into BE into AE is h plus half into FC into DF is again h plus AE which is again h into EF which is a. So therefore this can be written as now here if you compare these three terms you see that half h is common is a common factor in all of them. So let's take out half h. So we are left with BE plus FC plus 2a why 2a because half a half h we have taken outside but here there was no half so we multiplied it with 2 because we are basically dividing it with 2 so we are multiplying with 2 as well so this can be written as half h into b e plus f c plus a plus a this is how we can write it now b e plus f c plus a so all these three together forms what? So this makes BC. So BE plus FC plus A, all of these together make BC. So BC plus A and what is A? A is AD. So this is our final formula to find out the area of trapezium. That is half into H, that is height, the perpendicular into sum of the parallel sides that is BC plus AD. So therefore we say that area of a trapezium is given by half into height into sum of the parallel sides. Now how about finding the perimeter of a trapezium? Now when it comes to perimeter we know that for any geometrical shape perimeter is always equal to sum of all the sides like when we are talking about polygons because polygons are made up of line segments so sum of all the line segments that form that polygon would be the perimeter. Now in case of trapezium many different types of trapeziums exist for example a trapezium with one angle equal to 90 degree is a right angled trapezium. Whereas a trapezium with the non-parallel sides equal. For example, this side and this side, they are non-parallel. But if these non-parallel sides are equal in length, then it is called an isosceles trapezium. If you have a trapezium where the non-parallel sides are unequal in length, that is they are not equal in length, then that is a scalene trapezium. So these are the three types of trapezium that can exist. Now, doesn't matter which type of trapezium we are talking about, but perimeter of a trapezium would always be equal to sum of the four sides. Because a trapezium is always made up of four sides and when it comes to perimeter, it is just the length of the boundary. So that would be sum of the four sides. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.